Now to something all of us do and probably rarely consider, blinking. Scientists say we blink on average 15 to 20 times per minute. That's 1,200 times per hour and 28,800 times per day. But for thousands of people, the blinking gets out of control, leaving them functionally blind. The rare neurological disorder is called blepharospasm. Here's one woman's story. You know, when you're young, you're young and the world's wonderful and nothing, uh, nothing bad is gonna happen. They are the pleasures of life in retirement. Although I've always, I've worn glasses since I was in fourth grade. So, I mean, I've, in that sense, I've had eye limitations. A spontaneous walk on a brisk spring day. Everything starts from prayer. The, the, the print is a little bigger on this one. I could handle this one. A leisurely discussion of a well-loved book. It is not how much we do that is pleasing to God, but how much love we put into the doing. That's nice. For Nilda Rendino, books and walks and even watching TV are newfound gifts after 25 years spent like this. This is DYS number 3100 enrolled, enrolled at Emory University on September 20th, 2017. This was Nilda when she arrived at Emory Brain Health, a 75-year-old woman who had been living her life with her eyes closed most of the time. Um, and so it can be extremely disabling. Um, in fact, when it gets bad enough, we call, we say that people can be functionally blind because they can't keep their eyes open. What is happening to Nilda's eyes and face in this video, the spasms, the blinking, the eyes that won't open, is due to a condition called blepharospasm. Emory Brain Health's Dr. Hyder Jenna. In blepharospasm, the muscles surrounding the eyes are over contracting, so they are doing more than they should. But the problem is not in the muscles, the problem is actually in the brain's way of controlling your blinking. Somewhere along the line, the brain sends signals for your blinking that are too much, they're too exaggerated in some way. And so you blink longer, you spasm, uh, and your eyes may blink closed and they don't open for you, like uh, in Nilda's case. Nilda was diagnosed 20 years ago. That was after six years of going doctor to doctor, after giving up driving and reading and even watching TV. And I was lucky because people who went through that same situation were often told that it was in their head and not meaning that it was neurological, but that they were, you know, had psychological problems. Some people were hospitalized for their um, mental problems. Next thing I want you A rare condition without a known cause or cure. Blepharospasm usually begins sometime after the age of 50, affecting 40 to 50,000 people in the U.S., with twice as many as that thought to be misdiagnosed or undiagnosed. When she finally found out what she had 20 years ago from a doctor up north, Nilda remembers when he told her the treatment. And he said, well, you get uh, injections around your eyes. And I said, that's the good news. The treatment is botulinum toxin. And the way it works is by um, getting into the areas where the nerves control the muscles. And what it does is it slows the nerves down. It doesn't really paralyze them. Um, it slows them down so that their communication with the muscles they control is less forceful, if you will. I tell patients that it's like a local muscle relaxer. Um, that's a little bit simplified, but that's really what it's doing. It's working locally to calm the overactive muscles. Botox is the most well-known brand of botulinum toxins. While injections help the spasms, for 20 years, Nilda's eyes still stayed closed most of the time until her husband, Ron, drove her to see Dr. Jenna from their home in North Carolina. She has also a feature of blepharospasm that maybe only 10% of the patients have, and that's called apraxia of eyelid opening. The eyes close, and then they won't open by themselves. And the reason for that is because there's a spasm in the skinny muscle of your eyelid that goes right across here. And if that spasms while the eyes are closed, it can't roll up over your eyeball. A few months ago, Jenna changed the way she had been injected and included Nilda's eyelids. The results have been life-changing. And it's been like unbelievable. 
unbelievable. My neighbors who are used to seeing me going around with a visor and sunglasses all the time didn't know I had eyes, you know. They said, well, your eyes are open. I said, yes, my eyes are open. We were with Nilda three months after her newly altered injection plan. The results were beginning to wear off. I noticed that your eyes are closing as this light is on you. What impact does it have? If lights, bright lights are on my eyes, you know, they, they will close. It's not just a blink, they close. I'm having problems keeping my eyes open because of the light. TV is becoming problematic again. I'm not really, you know, able to keep them open long enough to follow the, the story. At her visit, Nilda has big news for the doctor. I drove a couple of times. Um, is that a new thing for you? Oh, yeah. There's an exam. I mean, I can see that you have a little bit of extra blinking. It's not too bad. I see that some of the blinks are a little bit slow, and the eyes don't want to open sometimes. Then the injections. You ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always do the eyelid first. Which Nilda says don't hurt that much. No, not really. I mean, you obviously you feel it going in, but, you know, I haven't had surgery, um, so that's not an issue. And some people, it hurts more than others for some reason. And then she's finished. All right, well, let's plan for next time then. Okay. Injections and an almost four hour drive every three months is not a cure, but it's a big quality of life boost. And it certainly gives new meaning to the phrase, eyes wide open. It's, yeah, it's, it's been a great three months. And we're going on another cruise and I wanna be doing well. <laughs> You, you know that this is something you're going to live with for the rest of your life. Well, this is it. This is great. So we know that parts of the brain aren't talking to each other like they should in people with blepharospasm. Hopefully research will lead to more effective treatments for this lifelong disorder. As for Nilda, well, she and her husband went on a cruise. She reported back to us that she enjoyed and saw all the beautiful sights along the way. After years spent in darkness, it was an incredible gift.